Hey, Kaito. I'm in charge of an important job, and I wanted to ask if you are willing to join the team. I don't know if I'll be able to pull off such a big job. My name is Kaito Kayama. I'm just an ordinary employee. I have no idea why my boss, Miss Kudo, asked me to join her team. The CEO is hoping for good results on this project. I think it will help your promotion if you help us and we succeed. Who are the other team members? I plan on gathering the best. I already asked Mr. Goriki, Miss Ishiyama, Mr. Iwata, and Miss Kanemori. Whoa, they're all known as the super elites of the company. You don't need to be so nervous about it. I just need you to do what you can to help things go smoothly. I'm asking you because I know I need your help to make this project successful. What I can do? Yep, I've been watching you ever since you started working here. You are my best option. What do you think? There's no way I will waste the opportunity Miss Kudo has offered me. I have to do this. I will do this. Miss Kudo? I would love to. I'll do my best. I promise. And so, I officially became a member of the project team. However, the other members of the team were all professionals. I didn't even get a chance to say a word at the meeting. To be honest, I had no idea what they were talking about. Hey, Kaito, uh, get the files ready. We need them by the meeting. Yes, sir! Can you summarize the points we covered in the meeting? The uh, boss needs a report. Sure thing! Kaito, I'm thirsty. My brain is so tired. I need something sweet. Okay, I'll be right back. All I could do was take care of the miscellaneous matters. Gosh. I'm so glad you're on the team, Kaito. I agree. What would we do without you? Kaito, thank you for being such a hard worker. Thank you. Oh, no. I'm honored to be working with the four of you. I hope we do well on the project. I'll get some coffee. Hey, am I the only one who thinks this is unfair? He gets to take the credit if the project goes well, but all he does is get us coffee. I feel you. He's not useful in any other way. Yet he gets to take credit for all the work that we do. I think we're the ones who should get all the credit, not him. I don't think we even need him to be here. The project was going well, but there wasn't much I could do to help. However, I did everything I could think of. Okay, I've put together everything that could help us get through the next week. Gosh, I was so focused. I didn't realize it was this late! Hey, Kaito. M Miss Kudo, why are you still at the office? Working. Anyways, Kaito, you can't overwork yourself just because this project is important. I don't want you to get sick. Take care of yourself, okay? I will. Thank you. Wow, you did a great job putting this together. Not everyone can summarize and put together all the information like this. Thank you, Miss Kudo. I've always liked doing things like this. I used to do it a lot when I was still a student. I see. The project is going well, huh? I'm rooting for you. However, eight months after the project started, the other crew members started suggesting I get kicked off the team. To tell you the truth, Kaido hasn't been doing any of the work. Is this true? So the four of you have been covering for Kaido's responsibilities? Yes, sir. We were waiting for him to step up, but it hasn't happened. He always gets in the way of our work. All he does is listen to us talk. He has never contributed to any of the ideas. Kaido, you have anything to say after listening to Goroki's thoughts? No, it's true. I haven't been able to contribute at all. We tried to make it work since we're a team, but I think it would be better for both parties if Kaito left. I agree with him. He's not helpful at all. Likewise, to be honest, I don't know why he is on the team. I feel the same as the others. Kaito, what do you think? Do you really think you haven't done anything to help the project? Miss Kudo, you gave me an opportunity, and I couldn't do my best. I apologize. It's a crucial project for the company. 
I will leave the team if that's for the best. I cried in the bathroom for a while. I thought we were a team, but I never realized what was going on behind everyone's smiles. <sighs> you can't stay here and cry all day, Kaito. Even if you're not part of the project anymore, you still have work to do. I need to focus on what I can do, instead of what I can't. Huh? The other one? You mean the project that started just recently? Yep, I want you to be there to help them. I just got kicked out for being useless. Why is she asking me? Kaito, not everybody realizes what you have been doing, but that doesn't mean it doesn't count. One day, you'll see that what you have been doing wasn't a waste of time. Miss Kudo. Although Miss Kudo gave me another chance at the new project, all I could do was summarize information and put it together for others. However, something happened that surprised me. Kaito, where did you find this material? It's so easy to read through. Oh, I found all the information online. I put it together myself. This is amazing! It has everything we need here! You are so talented! I think I have a great idea for the project thanks to your data. Me too! I've never been complimented like this. Well, not never. Miss Kudo always compliments me on creating documents. I'm glad my work wasn't all a waste of time. My confidence started to build after that incident. I began to feel proud being a member of the new project team. That's when I found out the news. Kaito, you worked with a different project team, right? Oh, yes. The other team members kicked me out because I wasn't useful. I heard they're breaking apart. The company is blaming them for failing, and they have no idea how to fix the situation. Huh? But they were doing so well. Kaito, can you come with me? I immediately realized that Miss Kudo calling me over had something to do with the first project I had worked on. They have something to say to you, Kaito. We were wrong! I'm so sorry. Please tell us where you got the documents we used to use! We need them! Remember? It had all the information we need to put into the one booklet! We can't find anything useful these days, and we're in trouble! Huh? It's not only about the booklets. Kaito was good at making reports too! We should ask him to come back! No! We just need the booklets! Gosh, you idiot! Why are you men so stupid? What the? You're a girl, and you can't even make a cup of tea! They don't seem to be getting along well. Uh, I'm sorry. The booklets I handed you aren't from a specific source. I researched and summarized the information into one piece. You can't be serious! None of you seem to understand how valuable Kaito was to your team. I'm disappointed. You guys are proactive and have good planning skills, but none of you have investigative skills. You never research. You only act based on your prior experiences and your instincts. You thought you could do better without Kaito, but kicking him off the team was the worst decision you could have made. Kaito, um, can you help us rebuild the project? No, he isn't available. I've already assigned him to a different project, where he is appreciated as he should be. Figure out how to clean up your own mess. That way you'll learn something from it. Are you sure you don't want me to go back? I remember you telling me the CEO was expecting good results. Don't worry about it. There are more important things for you to do than go back to a sinking ship. More important things? She's right. I need to give my all to team members who support and acknowledge me. Yes, ma'am! After some hard work on the project, the company executives noticed our improved work performance, and they decided to back us up. In the end, the project was a huge success. On the other hand, Mr. Gorinke's project fell through. They used to look down on the other employees, but I heard they can't walk with their heads held high anymore. Congratulations on your success! Are you ready for your next job? I was thinking of assigning you as the leader of the new project. Is that okay? Me? The leader? I'm sure you'll make a great leader. Something about the way Miss Kudo says it makes me believe her. 
She's the one person that has believed in me since the beginning. Of course, I'll do my best not to disappoint you. I hope that one day, I can repay Miss Kudo for everything that she's done for me. Kaito, I told my parents I will be sleeping over at a friend's house tonight. I would really appreciate it if you could take me out tonight. Huh? Take you out? Like a date? Wait, did you say sleepover? I'm Kaito Aizawa, 21-year-old uni student. Her name was Sakura Hakoye. She surprised me with her sudden request. Um, er, uh, sleepover? Hey, Sakura, do you know what that means? Yes, it means I am not going home tonight. No, she doesn't understand what any of it means. I have made my choice. I don't have any friends because I don't know anything about the real world. You are the only one who's ever talked to me, Kaito. I want to experience the joy of hanging out with a friend. It's been a dream of mine. Hmm. I wonder if she realizes it'll be a date. Her family owns Hakoye Zaibatsu. I heard she willingly attended a regular middle and high school in hopes of learning more about the people of the real world. However, she couldn't find any friends and she was too different from them in all ways. I understand. I'm not sure about the sleeping over, but we can hang out. Thank you, Kaito. She took me by surprise, but I decided to say yes. She makes me want to protect her. And to be honest, I have a huge crush on her. But it's all so sudden. I haven't had time to plan anything. What should I do? Uh, so you want to go karaoke first? Did you say karaoke? Kara is empty. Okay, it's a bucket. Do we sit inside it? I don't see how that's fun at all. No, we do not. I don't understand how you got there. It's a place where you get to sing into a mic to some music. Oh, that's wonderful. So that means we don't have to order an orchestra? I didn't know such a place existed. Well, none of us have the money to order an orchestra. Excuse me, do you have a room for two? Oh! I'm sorry. All of our rooms are occupied at the moment. If you can wait a bit, room number three will become vacant in about 30 minutes. Well, I guess they're full right now. Do you want to wait? No problem. We can have a negotiation. Huh? Excuse me. I would appreciate if you could leave now. Who uh, the hell are you? I would like to buy the rights to use this room. Is this enough? Yes, we will leave now. Yeah! Sakura, why do you have so much money in your bag? Well, my father taught me to bring cash just in case I can't use my credit card. She has too much! She's putting herself in danger! Sakura, are there any songs you'd like to sing? Let's see. I love classical music if there's anything in that genre. I don't think they have classical music here. Oh my! They have Mozart's magic flute! Queen of the Night Aria! I'll sing this! What? I can't believe they have Mozart at karaoke! Sakura was amazing at singing opera. She had a clear soprano voice, which she used elegantly to hit all the high notes perfectly. It's your turn next, Kaito! Well, what do I do? I don't know any of the songs she knows. Oh, Jupiter! I know this one! heard this is an arrangement of a classical song. Okay, I'll sing this one. I deeply regretted my previous decision. There was no way I could sing a song this high. It was made for women to sing. I was full of humiliation and shame. Kaito, are you okay? Are you feeling sick? Hmm? Wait, was somebody just looking in? We left the karaoke place since we didn't have the same taste in music. It was almost winter and the wind outside was chilly. It's getting dark already. So, where do people go on dates during the nighttime? Well, let me think. So, we ended up in a bar. But this is my first time in one. Um, er, uh, can you make something nice for the both of us? Sure thing. I had never been to a bar, but Sakura and I were already in our 20s. It felt like the right choice at the time. However, as it turns out, Sakura had minimum tolerance for alcohol. She was drunk a few minutes later. So, 
Let me tell you, my family treats me like a baby. They give me no freedom. I can never do what I want whenever I want to. S Sakura, uh, maybe we should get some water. No! I want to stay here on a date with you, Kaito! S Sakura, quiet down. Wait, what? I think I like you, Kaito. S Sakura? Oh, I see she fell asleep. Would you like me to call a cab for you? Oh, yes. Thank you. Hmm? Hey, I saw that guy at the karaoke place. Why is he sitting over there? D did he see Sakura's money when she took it out? Probably waiting for a chance to rob her. Oh, no. We gotta get away from him! Good evening. Where to? Uh, can you just start driving? <gasps> He's following us with his car! Excuse me, can you drive faster? Hey, I had to follow the speed limit. You had to tell me where to go anyways. What should I do? I don't know where she lives. I don't know her phone phone number either. Maybe I should take her to my place? Wait, no. I hope you have a good night. Excuse me, you gotta help us. We're being chased. What? Hold it right there, Kaito Aizawa. That's enough. There's no need for that anymore. What is going on? Who, who are you? His father is the chairman of the Hakoi group. His name is Shotaro Hakoi, and he is Misakura's father. What the? Sakura's father is here? We've been watching everything you did. I am impressed with how you handled my daughter. You didn't take her back to your place. Now you see how trustworthy you are. You're a good man. Oh, you were watching us this whole time? I want my daughter to be happy. But unfortunately, the world is full of vermin. I am very sorry for spying on you. It won't happen again. Now that I know that I can trust you. I have a feeling he let Sakura do what she wanted today so he could test my intentions. Um, so what would have happened if I had taken her back to my place? Hmm, I don't think you would want to hear my answer to that. Oh, never mind then. I hope you take good care of my daughter. Next day... I don't remember a single thing after drinking that cup of alcohol. Did I do anything rude to you? Or something embarrassing? N no you were fine. Kaito, I hope you take me out again sometime soon. Her father gave me his approval yesterday night. I don't know how far I should go. Why do I get the feeling the future is going to be a rocky road for me from here on? My name is Kaito Asaka. I'm a 27-year-old businessman. I'm not alone. There are plenty of people in this country who are forced to work excessive overtime. There are more exploitative companies than proper ones in this country. <laughs> I know the majority of the population will agree with me. I think everybody has thought of suddenly skipping a day of work. It comes so suddenly. The emptiness. Like, what is the point of my existence? I moved into the city five years ago. I haven't made any friends since I started working. I spend every day going back and forth from my house to the office. And this will continue for the rest of my life. Do you know how scary that sounds sometimes? Hey, are you listening to me? Please don't press the call button. I swear, I'll die if you do. I'm already 15 minutes late. Oh, but I'm supposed to be at work 30 minutes early, so that means I'm 45 minutes late. My boss must be fuming about now. It's absolutely terrifying. Hey, Kaito! You idiot! Where the hell are you? Ah! Ah! Ow! Oh gosh, what did I just do? I have no idea what you're doing. You're talking to a cat, and you just threw your phone into a fountain. Are you sick or something, mister? Uh, mister? Don't you have school? I don't have school. I quit last month. You quit? What did your parents say about that? No parents. I lived with my grandmother. 
lived. We had her funeral yesterday. That's why I'm wearing my school uniform. I'm all alone starting today. Do you see how depressing my situation is? Yeah, kinda. <laughs> Don't you think talking to a human is better than talking to a cat? You actually get feedback and reassurance. Oh, are you saying you've talked to a cat before as well? Yep, I pulled an all-nighter talking to this little cutie. Not that she was listening to a word I was saying. What? You were here all night? Yep, that's why I stink. You want to smell? Huh? Really? Wait, don't try to make me smell you! You're still underage, right? Don't you have relatives that you can rely on or someone to take care of you? You gotta hear this. None of my relatives are willing to take me in! My parents died when I was a little kid, and apparently all of my relatives hated them. They're actually happy I'm left to fend for myself. Why were your parents hated so much? Well, my relatives all worship this weird doll thing. My parents didn't believe in it, so they just didn't join the religious group. I think that's why everyone hated them. Jeez, your relatives sound crazy. What about your grandmother? What did she say? She believed in the doll at first, but I told her I would give her a cuter one. She loved the stuffed animal I gave her. I can see why you're such a strong girl. So, what are you planning to do? You shouldn't be here alone. There are plenty of creepy guys looking to target young girls. I guess I'll work part-time while I look for a place. But I need a guarantor to rent an apartment room. So, I guess I'll have to ask my relatives about that. I see. Well, I hope that goes well for you. I do. Thank you. I'm going to see my relatives, and then I'm coming back here. I want to talk to you about how it went. You can meet me here after work. What time will you be finished? Huh? Uh, maybe eight, I think? Okay, I'll see you at eight then. Bye, mister. I guess I should go to work. That girl's in more trouble than me. But she had such a cheerful smile on her face. Seeing her brought me back to reality. I rushed to get to work. My boss yelled at me just like I expected. But there's no time for me to be sulking. I need to get all my work done before 8 so I could meet the girl at the fountain in the park. They were reluctant at first, but I somehow convinced them to help me. But they told me I should have picked an apartment before seeing them since now they have to see me twice. But don't you need to find a guarantor? Nobody will lend you a room if you don't. Exactly! So I'm thinking of searching for a room tomorrow. Do you have work on Saturdays? No, I have the day off. I was a high school student until last month. I have no idea how to go about this room searching thing. Can you help me out? Wow, she should be more protective of herself. She can't let a stranger like me find out where she lives. If I go with you, I'll find out where you live. Do you realize that? Oh, it'll be okay. If something happens, so be it. She acts like she's fine, but she's probably lonely and desperate on the inside. I guess I'll look after her until she can put her life back together. Okay, let's go find a place that is safe for a young girl like you to live alone. The next day, we went around the city to look for a nice place to live. We found a room. She moved in the next day. I helped her move in and went shopping for daily necessities. Do you have any money? Yep, I have some money saved up and my grandmother left me some too. I don't have enough to lend you any, but don't worry, I won't have to borrow from you. I'm not gonna ask you to lend me money. Hey, my job starts tomorrow. Do you want to meet up at the fountain before I go to work? Huh? Oh, sure. And so, the girl and I started meeting up at the fountain in the park every day. Morning before work. Good morning! I'm off to work now. Good luck! Yeah, you too. Night after work. Hey, mister. I'm so tired. Hey there. How was your first day? Well, actually... I feel much better about coming to work these days. Maybe it's because I get to see her. She makes me feel like I can pull through. Seeing her happy and feeling her energy beside me reminded me I wasn't a robot, but a human being worthy of having a good life. I started taking her out to eat and went shopping with her. It was my way of showing my appreciation. One day, after about three months... Hey, mister! Did you know tomorrow is my birthday? Do you want to celebrate with me? Sure! 
Do you want to eat dinner together tomorrow night? Yay! The next day, I took the girl to a nice restaurant. So, how old are you now? Eighteen! You're ten years younger than me, but you're so strong. Huh? How? You've been through so much, yet are willing to take a step forward. <laughs> That's because you're here to help me through it all. The first time I saw you at the fountain, I instantly felt I could talk to you. That you were willing to listen. I mean, you were talking to a cat. To tell you the truth, I was pretty depressed that day. But seeing you so broken made me realize I needed to step up and live my life to the fullest. If I didn't meet you, I think I would have given up on life. So, thank you. Wow, I feel exactly the same way. I don't know where I would be now if you didn't come into my life. I appreciate you taking the time for me. I guess life isn't as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> so, do you have any goals for life? Hmm, I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life, so it would be nice to make a family of my own. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know about me, but I'm sure you'll find somebody nice. Why aren't you sure about yourself? It's difficult to meet new people when you're as old as I am. I don't even see my friends anymore. This is depressing. Hey, I'll marry you once I become an adult. You realize I'll be 30 when you turn 20? What's the big deal? There are plenty of people who get married and have kids at 30. She's talking about kids already? We're not even dating. I think it would be better for you to take your time to find the perfect guy for you. You're still young. But I don't think there will be a better guy for me than you. And I doubt you'll find a woman who will understand you as I do now. That's true. Right? Okay, so you'll be my boyfriend? Okay. Then you gotta stop calling me Mr. from now on. Fine, you can call me Hanada then. Hanada, that's a pretty name. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing to hear you say my name, mister. I just told you not to call me that, dummy. Two years later, we got married. And we helped each other through our darkest times. We'll continue supporting each other through our life together. We're now getting ready to welcome a new family member next year. My name is Riku Shiba. Today, we're all out drinking. And there are 15 of us, including our bosses. Man, you hit your target and then some again this month. It's been three years, and you're still the definite champ. I'm jealous of your talent. It only works because I have your support. But if this really was my talent, I must be incredibly lucky to have landed in this position. Oh, come on. You're so humble. You're the prodigal child of sales. I'm sure soon. You're gonna be executive manager soon. Tomokawa, you better get along with him or you might regret it. <laughs> You're right. How's that beer looking? Oh, come on, Mr. Tomokawa. By the way, there seem to be a lot of girls going after you because they know you've got a bright future ahead of you. You don't have any girls you're interested in? Huh? Really? I haven't heard anything about it. Ah, it's his romance talk. What kind of girls are your type? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know about your type, but you always seem to be looking at me. Huh? I don't look at you. Oh, you. Yes, you do. I always feel like you're watching me. I can feel my skin shiver when you look at me. Hey, hey! You can't be staring at Miss Buramaki till she feels shivers. <laughs> Your type is girls like Buramaki? You like cute girls, huh? What the hell? I don't want to ruin the mood, so I can't say no, but I definitely was not staring at her. She works internal sales, so we talk a lot when she comes back from her rounds, and she seems to want to talk to me more. She even came to sit next to me immediately. I'm not interested in her, though. The girl who's known for being ditzy and cute, Buramaki? is adored by the male employees. But she's not the kind of girl I liked. I'm sure there's a beam coming out of your eyes. That's why it's shocking me. That's no good. You gotta be careful, Shiba. <laughs> Darn, I guess I'm unconsciously sending beams out? Uh, can I go get it fixed using PTO? Huh? Who's gonna go on sales while you do that? <laughs> I think you should focus on keeping your skin moist, Miss Verimaki. 
If there are beams coming out of Mr. Shiba's eyes, your skin seems to be the only one being affected. In other words, you have some kind of flaw in your skin causing its defensiveness to fall. I think that would be the correct thing to think. No, no, no! Shiba is sending me special eye beams only directed at me! Huh? The super serious outside sales girl, Amano, is saying some strange things because of Bertamaki. Mr. Shiba, I need you to send those beams to me so I can experience it. I'll see if my skin barrier can defend against it. He can only beam against me! Oh my god. Can you two please move away from the beam subject? <laughs> Um, I haven't been looking at Miss Burakawa that much to begin with. That's true. You're always having a stare-off with your computer screen. Yeah, that's true. One of my eyes is terrible sight, so if I don't get close, I can't really see well. But how did you know I stare at the computer? It was interesting when I noticed, so I'm always observing when I get the chance. Observing? You say that like you're talking about a bug. That's so cruel! Actually, it is like a new kind of bug. Quite interesting, really. What? A new bug? That's not good. I gotta be careful from now on. <laughs> yeah, it really is not good. It's so not good that I want to see that look often. So make sure to be around me. You know, her sales records are really good, so I figured she was straight edge, but maybe she's pretty goofy? Are you complimenting him? Yeah, I love bugs. Miss Amano, are you drunk? Hmm? I don't really get tipsy or drunk, and I don't think I've ever gotten dizzy indoors. Miss Amano seems different from usual. What do you think got into her? Eh, she's probably drunk. She's been talking a lot. Nah, she's actually known for saying some interesting things with a serious look on her face in the sales department. Oh, so she's working right now? Miss Baramaki always says strange things, and Miss Amanu is now in a weird mood too. I'm stuck between them. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. I'm gonna go talk to someone else. <laughs> How about you deal with these two? You're the sales department VIP. You got this. Mr. Shiba, don't worry, you have me. It's okay. When these kinds of things happen, you bring in more people to talk, and don't let the two hold the mic at all. I may lose to you in sales records, but I'm pretty good at handling women. You don't have a girlfriend, but you're such a great employee. How have you been single? I'm not that popular, but it's been about two years since I've met someone. No way! You would definitely be popular! Wow! Can I suggest myself? Well, there you go, Shiba. You got someone. You shouldn't go with Miss Takuta, lol. She doesn't take care of her unwanted hairs, lol. <laughs> I've heard that people who keep things that aren't necessary have messy rooms. Um, Miss Bernamaki? Have you had too much to drink? <laughs> I might be a little drunk. What? Are you okay? Hey, you need to stop, Burimaki. You're pretending to be all ditzy to get Mr. Shiba to look at you, but it's clear you're just faking it. Maybe acting ditzy is your stupid sales tactic, and if it works, then whatever. But don't start talking down on people in your own company. You're not ditzy or anything to us. Ugh, why are you guys so mad? I'm so scared. Save me, Mr. Shiba. What do I do? I need to calm the situation down. What do I do? Amano, save me! You're like a beautiful butterfly that was caught in a spider web. It's cute. You shouldn't be making observations right now. Miss Burimaki, get away from Mr. Shiba. You're even more ruder than usual. Yeah! You're usually saying things that aren't really appropriate, but today you're going too far! You need to apologize to Miss Takuda! Miss Burimaki, if you like Mr. Shiba that much, I recommend the Kamadama. What? Kamadama? What is that? It's a grasshopper with long black legs. It's called toilet cricket from where I'm from. Isn't it a pest? It's not a pest. It's super calm and causes no actual harm. It's a little clumsy and sometimes hops too hard, smacking itself into the ceiling and killing itself. What part of that is clumsy? 
There's this certain flew too close to the sun vibe about it. You've definitely got a pet Kamadama and called it Icarus, didn't you? How did you know? But yes, it isn't a bug that you should have inside a small space. I felt bad, so I let Icarus free into the room and... I don't care about Icarus! Why are you talking about bugs and suggesting me a bug right now? I like Mr. Shiba too. So I figured since we have a similar taste in men, you would have a similar taste in bugs. No, you stupid bug nerd! Well, thank you. I don't know enough about bugs to be called a nerd, though. I'm not complimenting you! <laughs> you're much cuter when you're telling someone off. It's always seemed like you were trying to say something weird. I agree. Miss Takuda, I'm sorry about the previously rude statement from Miss Burimaki. Why are you apologizing, Miss Amano? As a comedy team, the responsibility also lies with me as well. When did I join your comedy team? You were the serious one, right? I did not agree to that! Miss Baramaki, if you keep doing that, I don't think it'll ever stop. Maybe you should be the adult? I'm sorry, Miss Takuda. I honestly think that it's better for you to act serious than constantly put up that ditzy act. Thank you for forgiving me. Let's go for the top spot on the comedy skit champs. I'm not going to do that. What's wrong with you? What were we talking about? After that day, she stopped putting on her ditzy act. She started acting super serious and was like a different person. Because of that, she got along with the other female employees and her sales went up. I started flirting with Miss Amano like crazy. Her ditziness was perfect for my sense of humor. Miss Amano, would you like to grab food sometime? I told you before, but... I like you. I obviously would have made a move on you. If you ask me out like that, you're gonna be getting my hopes up to some degree. Is that okay? Oh, uh, but I, uh, I like you too. So, you can get your hopes up if you'd like. If that's true, then good. I don't feel it yet. Huh? Feel what? You shoot beams out of your eyes to people you like, right? I didn't say that! We started dating. She liked me sooner than I liked her. But now, I'm head over heels for her. My name is Itaru Aikawa. I'm 25. I used to be a loser in high school, but I decided to become a hairstylist after graduating. I'm so glad I came here before my reunion. I used a smoky pink on your hair since you didn't have much color left. I think it suits your image the most. Thank you, I love it! Some of your makeup came off when I washed your hair. Let me fix it for you. Wow, you can do makeup too? Amazing! I practice doing makeup in my free time. Hairstyles and makeup need to work together. Since your complexion is blue-based and your hair is smoky pink, the Casa's colored eyeshadow will bring out the best of your facial qualities. Uh, it's perfect! Oh, yeah! My high school reunion is coming up soon! Cool! You must be excited! Is there anybody in particular you want to see? Yup. The It Girl. The It Girl? One of my classmates was intelligent and breathtakingly beautiful. She was the most popular girl in school. And she was also kind to me. I haven't seen her since graduation, so I'm excited to see how she's doing. I had feelings for her all through high school. However, I was just a loser. I never got a chance to tell her how I felt. We both have something to look forward to. I agree. Tell me about it when you come back next time. Hey guys! Ataru, it's been a while! You looking good! Ataru, your hair is so fancy! It's nice! You're a hairstylist now, right? Yes, I am. Seriously? I bet all the girls love you! Nah, life isn't that easy. Plus, it's pretty heavy labor. I'll be right back. Wait, that must be Izumi. She was the tallest one out of all the girls. I'm sure it's her. Hey, Izumi, how have you been? Uh, 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 Taru? She has a huge scar, and she's crying. Did someone say something to hurt her feelings? 
How have you been? Uh, well... I'm a hairstylist now. What do you do, Izumi? I work at the city hall. Oh, do you? I'm not surprised. You were smart. I never thought you would become a hairstylist, Ataru. Yeah. I look a lot different from when we were in high school. No, that's not what I meant to say. It's okay. I know I was a loser. My parents were against it, but I dropped out of college to go to a professional school. Ataru, you're so strong. Hey, did something happen? Well... Yo, Ataru! You hitting on Izumi? Yuck, talk about being desperate. I see you're making the best of an opportunity. She was too good for you back in high school. You couldn't even talk to her. Well, now it's hard to talk to her in a different way than before. I can't stop looking at her scar. Did you see everyone's face when they saw it? Cut it out, guys. Let's go, Azumi. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. You didn't have to leave the reunion just for me. It's okay. I didn't want to be around them anyways. Everyone stopped talking when Izumi and I walked back into the room to get our stuff. They were pointing and whispering about her scar. They were so cruel. I always thought you were more of the quiet type. I wasn't expecting you to go out of your way to help me like that. But it means a lot. Hey, I just didn't like how they were acting so immature. We're adults now, aren't we? It's true, but I've gotten used to it. Some people even stopped to peer into my face to catch a glimpse of my scar. So, if it's okay, can I ask what happened? Well, last year, I found out my boyfriend was cheating on me, and the girl wanted me to break up with him. Unbelievable. She got so heated up. She attacked me. Everything happened so suddenly. I shut myself off from the world since I was so hurt about everything. But I came to the reunion hoping it would bring back some good memories. But I don't think I should have come. Everyone looked shocked to see me. You're the only one who talked to me out of all the guys. Hey! Back in high school, I really liked you. You were the most attractive girl there. Thank you. But things are a lot different now. It's just like those two were saying. You can't walk around with a girl with a face like this. There's no problem with your face! I don't know if you remember, but I was forced to be the maid waitress at the school festival during our senior year. Of course, I remember that. All the guys were so excited about it, but you seemed to be upset. Now that I look back on it, it wasn't such a huge deal. But at the time, I felt so uncomfortable and humiliated. On the day of the festival, you did my makeup so I wouldn't feel so embarrassed about it. Oh, yeah. I drew pumpkins and skeletons to make it feel like a Halloween costume. You don't know how much that meant to me. I was thankful that you cared for my feelings. And all the kids who saw me loved it. Thanks to you, I actually had fun at the festival. I don't think I got a chance to properly thank you. I really appreciated it. I didn't realize how much I helped. I'm glad I did it. That's when I realized physical appearances matter when it comes to a person's attitude towards life. And that's why I am where I am now. Wow, does that mean I had a huge effect on your life? Yeah, you did. Well, maybe we could hang out sometime. I'm planning to go see this makeup artist's upcoming seminar. Hey, she's famous! Are you sure? Yes, of course. But wouldn't it be embarrassing for you to walk next to me? I don't care what your face looks like. I like you because you're such a kind and caring person. Thank you, Ataru. Gosh, that was amazing. I can't believe we saw it so up close. Hey, look at that. Huh? That's just ridiculous. Hey, look. What's up with your face? Oh my. That scar totally ruins your face. It must be so humiliating to walk next to her. I could never do that. 
But her boyfriend is a loser. I guess they suit each other. Ushida? Anamoto? Why are you even talking to us? We're just commenting on how pathetic you two look. Izumi, I heard that scar is from a cat fight over a guy. That's what you get for being so full of yourself. Let's get out of here. But... Please. Ataru, I'm okay, really. Fine. Yo, Shida! How can you treat her so differently just because of one scar? I remember you used to follow her around like a puppy dog. You're the pathetic one. Hi, Mrs. Aikawa. Oh, hi there. Why don't you come in? Thank you. Izumi and I used to go to high school together. Yes, I remember you. You looked like an angel, just like you did back then. I'm home. Oh, hey, sis. You're home early. I was working the night shift. Who's your friend? It's nice to meet you. I'm Izumi Inoue. Oh, that's one nasty scar. When did you get that? About a year ago. I'm sorry if it makes you uncomfortable. Hey! No, I meant... Here, come sit down. Hmm. I won't be able to get rid of it perfectly, but I can make it so it doesn't look so obvious. Uh, are you sure? Really? Yeah. Uh, um, how will you... Oh, my sister is a plastic surgeon. Plastic surgeon? Well, we focus on reconstructive surgery, like fixing up scars like yours, or using lasers on wrinkles and age spots. F fixing up... scars. Come by my hospital. I'll see what I can do. Oh, okay, I'm gonna crash out. Do you think it will really work? My sister's pretty good at what she does. You can trust her. Okay, I... I think I'll try it. After that, Izumi started the treatment with my sister. And after a while, how is it? It doesn't hurt. I'm excited to take off the gauze next week. I think I'm more nervous than you. Taru, you worry too much. You should believe in your sister. I know, I know. But still... Here, take a look in the mirror. Oh, wow! It's almost all gone! I mean, I can see it's a bit red, but it looks nothing like before! Your skin is still extremely sensitive, so make sure you keep it out of the sun. My brother has the skills to cover it up with makeup, so you should ask him to help you. You wouldn't even need concealer for this. Let's go pick out the right foundation for you. Really? I tried concealer so many times, but it never worked. We should practice makeup together when we get home. Thank you. It's them again! Yo, lovebirds! Why are you two together again? Wait, are you dating? Huh? What? No way! What happened to the scar on your face? So what if we're dating? I've liked her since we were in school together. I'm happy that we are. Leave us alone. The scar. I got it fixed thanks to Ataru. I am so thankful for his existence. Why is he hitting on a girl with her boyfriend when he's with his girlfriend? Maybe she's just jealous of how pretty the girl is. His girlfriend looks mean. Izumi, now that your scar is gone, you're pretty again. You're good enough to date me. Just jump Ataru. What? What the heck? We don't have time for you guys. Please stop wasting it. We're gonna be late for our reservations. Reservations? We're on our way to make wedding rings together. Izumi, let's go. Okay. Wedding rings? <laughs> Whatever. I'm dumping you. Go after whoever you want. Hey! Wait! It was a joke! Izumi's scar is mostly gone now, and it's unnoticeable now. She smiles more, and I'm lucky to be the one who gets to see it the closest. I hope we stay this way forever. I want to be the one she can rely on for support, 
whenever she needs it. My name is Koki Nakahata. I used to work in an office. However, I couldn't handle the people. I wanted to avoid interactions with every human being, and that is why I'm working from home now. I only leave the house during the middle of the night. The only places I go to are convenience stores or supermarkets. <sighs> working hard has got me craving some ice cream. Ice cream and Coke. My brain is exhausted. I need some sugar. Ugh. I've come at the wrong time. Look at those thugs sitting there. Here's your change! Thank you for shopping here! After I finished shopping, I walked out to find a woman talking to the thugs who were sitting outside. She was lecturing them on how inappropriate it was to sit outside and trash the scene. You guys, didn't you learn that trash goes into the trash can? Stop being selfish! Think about the other customers and the employees who have to clean it up. Shut up, woman! Who do you think you are? Oh, gosh. She's crazy. Why would she pick a fight with them? I hate people like her. They think they're doing the world good by forcing their justice beliefs onto people. I don't want anything to do with them. Huh? Hey! Why did you do that? What? Your bag was getting in the way of other customers, so I just moved it. You jerk! How can you be so cruel? <laughs> hey! The world is cruel! We all gotta learn to live accordingly! Jeez. See what happens when you stick your head into things you shouldn't? Why do I have to deal with this crap? Ugh. I should just ignore them and leave. Hey, let's all chill a bit. Nobody has to get hurt here, right? Huh? What do you want? Cold out here. Why don't we all part ways and go home? Everybody enjoys eating ice cream inside a kotatsu, right? Huh? So you're an introvert. Sucks for you. We enjoy rough and tumble play outside. Hey, are you okay? What are you doing out here? I'm calling the cops. Yikes! Clear out! I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. My place is just around the corner. We need to treat your injuries. No, no, it's okay, really. I'm fine. I'm perfect. But look, you're hurt. Gosh, why won't she leave me alone? Wish I just ignored them. I hate myself for not preventing this from happening. Hey, I'm going home. No, you're going to treat your wounds properly. We need to clean them up. Damn it! She's not listening to anything I say! This is why I hate people like her! She was too pushy. I had no choice but to follow her to her place. I think you'll be okay now. Thanks for everything, miss. So I guess I'll get going then. No way! I saw you hit your head! I'm worried. You should stay the night. I'm scared you'll have internal bleeding! What? No way! No way! Huh? Why not? I need to be alone when I sleep. Let me go home! What? Wow, you must be a sensitive sleeper. So what if I am? Fine, then tell me your address and give me your number. That's personal information. You might have a concussion. But what will you do if you feel sick later? I won't! Stop worrying about me! Don't like being with other people! Just leave me alone! She just wouldn't give up. It was tiring trying to convince her. I figured I would get home faster if I told her my contact information. I rushed out of there as soon as I wrote down my phone number and address. <sighs> Thank God I was able to escape. Darn! My ice cream melted! I was traumatized by what happened to me that night. But this was only the beginning. Little did I know hell was waiting for me the next day. How are you feeling? I brought some bandages for you. Please. That is unnecessary. No, it's not. We need to keep the wound clean until it heals. Do it myself. Thank you. Goodbye. The woman rang my doorbell every single freaking day. First, she was concerned about my minor injuries. But then she started advising me on how to fix my messed up daily routine. She was also worried if I was eating properly. She wanted me to wake up earlier. She was annoying. Who does she think she is? She has no right to lecture me about my life. She's not the one living it. I hated socializing so much that it only took me a week to reach the end of my rope. Hi there. 
So, I brought you something nice today. I apologize that this sounds harsh, but I've had it with you. I don't need you to impose your values on me. Oh! I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that's how you felt. I kind of felt bad for her. Now we can both move on with our lives. I couldn't forget her face. She looked so downhearted at my words. I have an idea of how she was feeling. I've had experiences with people turning me down like this. I wasn't expecting to see her again. But the girl came to my house the next day. I apologize for yesterday. I didn't want to bother you again, but there is just one thing I needed to talk to you about. What is it? I used to be a shut-in when I was a student. I hated socializing, and I couldn't stand talking to people. My walls were always up, and I never let anybody in. There was this one teacher. He was so annoying. He hated anything that was out of place. But he's the one who helped me out of my cage. He convinced me to open the doors to the outside world. At the time, I was frustrated with him for butting into my life. But I am thankful for what he did. I see the old me whenever I look at your face. And I couldn't leave you alone. I'm sorry. Oh, now I understand. So that was the reason she kept bugging me when I obviously didn't want her around me. I was the opposite. I used to have a strong sense of justice. I was overflowing with it. Couldn't leave people alone. I had to stick my hand into every issue I saw, even when nobody wanted me to. Everyone hated me for it, and I don't blame them at all. That's why I cut myself off from the world. It's easier that way. I don't have to risk getting hurt by being around people. That's why I can't stand watching you act that way. Huh? I get it now, and I'm sorry. No, I'm the one who needs to apologize. We're so silly. I think we're more alike than we thought. And we're opposites, too. Hey, I know you told me you don't want to see me anymore, but I'll make sure I don't get in your way. So can I come visit you soon? I just want to support you. I don't even have to see your face. Let me bring you food or anything I can do for you. I wouldn't feel comfortable just receiving gifts from you. Oh, really? If you're gonna bring me something, I should thank you in person. That's the right thing to do. <laughs> thank you. I guess I'll see you soon then. Okay. I found out her name was Akane. She continued to visit me every day and always brought gifts for me. She also helped me clean my room. We were spending so much time together. By the time I realized, I had opened my heart to her. It was weird considering how much I didn't like her when I first met her. Now, Akane and I are dating. We're the complete opposite, but similar at the same time. She understands who I am, and is always there for me. My name is Reito Masakua, 32 years old. I'm a hotel manager at Grand Oriental. Many employees work at a hotel, mainly in five sections. Guest services, maintenance, kitchen, convention and events, and sale. Professionals in each section cooperate to keep the hotel up and running. I am not appointed to any of those sections. I am not a specialist. I help out with all sections, and I oversee all operations of the hotel. You are so rude. Do you even know how much money I've spent on this hotel? I'm terribly sorry. How did you not know my face or my name? I'm a regular here. Please accept my sincerest apology. I promise I will never make the same mistake. Hi, Miss Roitani. What a pleasure to see you here. Ryo has just joined our team, and it's my fault for not covering the basics with her. We should have prepared her properly before letting her come out here. I am so sorry for the inconvenience. I'm counting on you. You know how much I love this hotel, right? Ryo, Mr. Oitani has been a regular here longer than any of the employees who have worked here. He's the one to go to if you ever have any questions. <laughs> Imagine me trading one of your employees. That's just hilarious. Riho, how about you apologize and then you can introduce yourself. Huh? Um, yes. I am sincerely sorry for causing such trouble for you. I will do my best not to disappoint you again. Hey, I feel bad for going too hard on you too. Um, Rio, right? Let's get along, okay? Mr. Masukua, thank you for saving me back there. Let's not promise customers you'll never make the same mistake again, okay? I mean, we need to learn from our mistakes, obviously. But we're not robots. 
and you've just arrived here. It'll be worse if you make the same mistake after promising never to screw up again. I'm not encouraging you to make a ton of mistakes, but if you ever do, don't forget to be honest with the customer. Mr. Itani easily gets upset, but he isn't a horrible person. Shift your perspective, and you'll see he got angry with you because he has high expectations for us. Okay? You got this, Riho. Thank you. I will do my best. I've seen many complaints, and they are categorized into three big groups. The first is a complaint about the hotel. These are voices we need to listen to. That way, we can improve our services. The second is a complaint caused by a misunderstanding. The outcome relies on how the employee handles the situation. The third is when the customer makes an unjust request just for their satisfaction. I know, right? I invited her to an expensive hotel restaurant, and she doesn't even show up! What a loser! It'll be great to see her live in poverty for the rest of her life! Huh? It's my fault for reserving a seat before getting her consent? Shut up, man! Mr. Nakanuki. Not again. Um, Mr. Nakanuki, I'm sorry to bother you. Other customers are enjoying their meals here. Is it possible for you to lower your voice a little bit? Huh? No, this little fly keeps annoying the hell out of me. Um, Mr. Nakanuki, your voice? Hey, I'll call you back later. Why are you annoying the crap out of me? You're just a hotel guy. You have no right to give me orders. Do you know who you're talking to? Uh, yes. You are Mr. Kasuo Nakanuki from Nakanuki Real Estate. You forgot to say that Nakanuki Real Estate is the biggest company in Japan. And I'm the next president. You need a lesson on how to speak to people on a higher level than you, you obnoxious punk! I am terribly sorry. Of course, you are a valuable customer, but we have other valuable customers dining here as well. I will be forever grateful for your consideration, sir. Huh, <laughs> fine, whatever. I don't want to eat here anymore. I'm putting in a complaint later on. Please accept my sincerest apology. Mr. Nakanuki frequently visits our hotel these days. The majority of the employees feared him for his vulgar language and oppressive attitude. So we have to throw this out? Mr. Masakua, can't we just ban Mr. Nakanuki from coming to the hotel? I know how you're feeling, but I don't think we can do that just yet. He's just started coming here, and it's not like he comes every day. I'll do my best to support you guys when he's here. Let's try to hold on for a bit. I can't forget that the employees are human too. Although we are used to dealing with countless complaints every day, doesn't mean we don't feel anything from each one. I'm aware of the tears and frustrations they feel. It's part of my job to help the employees emotionally. Check-in should start to calm down right about now. Huh? Hey, come on! You don't get paid much for standing here, right? I have a lot of time on my hands. Just come out to my suite and we can have a nice afternoon together. You can order whatever you want. Oh, um... I am still on my shift, so I cannot leave the reception counter. Fine, then come after you finish work. What time do you get off? Excuse me, Mr. Nakanuki. Your request calls for service beyond what our hotel provides. I'm afraid we are unable to comply. What? Oh, it's you again! Shut up already! Stop getting in the way of my love life! Your love life? Riho, do you have a boyfriend or anybody you have feelings for? You can answer quietly so other customers can't hear. Huh? Just come up with somebody so they'll give up on you. Uh, I am so sorry, Mr. Nakanuki. I am in love with Mr. Masukua. I cannot date you because he is the only one in my heart. Oh. What? You've gotta be kidding me. I throw her a pass and she just shoots it right down my face, huh? Oh, what should I do? Um, well, so, you can see how this love story will turn out badly for you. Ugh! This is such a waste of my time! I hate this place! I am terribly sorry. Um, I wasn't asking you to name a person. Especially mine, since that would put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry! You know, Riho, you are an attractive woman. There'll probably be more customers who approach you, so you might want to learn some skills to gently let them down. Yes, sir. Thank you again. However, this was only the beginning. After that, 
Mr. Nakanuki started to target me every time he came. Huh? Mr. Nakanuki wants to talk to me? About what? He won't tell us. He wants you to come. Gosh, you took too long to get here. I forgot what I wanted to say. You can leave now. I understand. Mr. Masakawa, Mr. Nakanuki just called from his room. He remembers what he wants to tell you, and he wants you up there again. What? You are so slow. Turtle would get here faster than you. I forgot again. Go away, poor boy. I'll get going then. He did this repeatedly. His tactics were always immature and selfish. Mr. Masukua, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. Don't worry about it. My fault for not dealing with it better. Plus, I think it's better this way. The other employees won't have to deal with him as long as he's focused on me. It's important to maintain a healthy emotional state when it comes to dealing with customers. But that just means you'll be... You don't have to worry about me. I'm just worried about what will happen in the next few days. I won't be here to support you all. Do you think you guys will be able to handle it? Uh, of course! I will learn faster and grow stronger. I don't want to cause you any more trouble. They will be just fine. Riho. She's gotten so much stronger. I was asked to help with an event for the next few days. The Grand Oriental was scheduled to open a new hotel, and I was to attend the opening ceremony. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. Tadayori Ando, who was in charge of the hotel's building design. Dad, that's him! He's the one who keeps bugging me! Always trying to claim the moral high ground! Hmm, Mr. Nakanuki. I figured he would be here with his father, but I didn't expect to see him this early on. Hello there, Mr. Nakanuki. It's good to see you here. Hmm. I don't know if he realizes this, but he reeks of poverty. He has no right to order you around. He's just a hotel manager. What a joke. Right? That's why I've been trying to teach him his place for the past few days. Hey, who the hell do you think you are? Lowlife idiots should act accordingly, so we don't have to kick you out. Hey, Kazutaro! Kazuo! Who are you talking to over there? Oh, Dad, uh, Mr. Chairman. The next speaker is... Oh, I guess it's my turn. The administrative manager of our hotel group, from the newest line of our hotels, Grand Mass. Please welcome Mr. Reito Masukua to the stage. What? what? You fools! Mr. Masukua is the second son of the man who owns hotels all over the world! Please tell me you didn't do anything rude toward him! I finished my short speech and came back to find the chairman blowing up at Mr. Nakanuki and his father. Mr. Chairman, let's all take a breath, okay? I'm here representing my family, but my brother is the one who's taking over the company. I'm just a regular hotel man working at Grand Oriental. <laughs> you are so modest. You have such great characters, sir. As for these two, they will be facing the proper consequences for their unacceptable behavior. After that, the chairman told me that he had Mr. Nakanuki removed from his position as the future president. I haven't seen him at the hotel since the event. Hi, guys. Thanks for holding up the fort for me. Mr. Mr. Masukua! I'm glad you're back, Mr. Masukua. Thanks. I am too. And so, all of us here at the Grand Oriental will continue to work hard to get the best services to our customers. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications.